So good morning, everybody. Are you guys ready to get into the Word of God this morning? Are you excited to be in the house of God? Man, I am so grateful for times like this where we can come together. And really what we're doing is we're lifting our soul unto God. You know, that's an expression we see David use in Psalm 25, other places in the Psalms. He said, unto you, O Lord, do I lift my soul. And so how many of you know our God is the most high? You just can't take him out of his place. <laughs> He's always in that high place, you know, and we see that the 91st Psalm, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. He's my God in him. Will I trust? What is that a picture of lifting our soul unto God? You know, the world we live in, it's full of all kinds of things that can frustrate you, bring you down, beat you up, discourage your heart. And so right in the middle of all of that, we can, like we're doing right now this morning, lift our soul up to him, the shepherd of our soul, right? And say, Lord, I need you. I trust in you. I believe in you. You're mine. I'm yours. And that strengthens and empowers you to overcome everything that's going on horizontally, if you will, when we go vertical. Come on, how many of you just wanna, with me this morning, let's go vertical as we hear the word of God, let him pour into us, amen. Had to preach to you for just a second because I'm not preaching this morning, so I gotta get it out a little bit, all right? But hey, we love you, we're praying for you, and you're in the right place at the right time, I'm telling you, and I am so excited to introduce our special guest. Marty Blackwelder's in the house this morning, and we're so blessed to have him with us. You know, I, I was thinking about it. I think I met you 22 years ago, uh, Brother Marty, and it uh, sounds wild to say that, um, but he has been a friend to this church and has come over the years. I think the first time you came to minister was like 2007 or something. And so we're so thankful for you and the gift that you are to the body of Christ. And I wanna give you maximum time, sir. So why don't you put your hands together as Brother Marty comes to minister the word of God. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Jordan. Praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. amen. You can be seated this morning. Such a joy to be with you. And Dick, Dick, you've got me here, right? All right, man, just making sure. Whoa, we're going to have a good time this morning. It is going to be a vertical service. Amen. So get ready. It's a blessing, of course. Uh, we love your pastor so much and appreciate always coming to be with you. Uh, there's so many new faces. I've been here through the years. If I haven't had the opportunity to meet you or greet you or shake your hand or say hello to you, I'd be uh, very honored to do so. Uh, as, as I said, it's a blessing to be with you as we begin uh, the year of 2024. And uh, we move forward into all that God has prepared for us personally as members of the body of Christ and also uh, as a member uh, of Restore Church or a participant here. You know, on a previous visit a couple of years ago, I met in a more private setting uh, with church leadership and those who were volunteering in various uh, capacities, and I shared some things regarding uh, the local church that I want to revisit this morning just as we began, uh, because there, those, those things are pertinent to all of us as a member of the body of Christ, and particularly uh, when it comes to our association uh, with a local church, and specifically this one, Restore Church. You know, God is a God of order. He's very strategic uh, when it comes to his plans, his purposes, his assignments and visions that he sets forth uh, in cities, regions, nations. And he's also very strategic when it comes to the individuals uh, that he assigns to those visions. So with, with that in mind, how many of you believe you're in the right place at the right time with the right people? Amen. Praise God. And I, I believe you are. You know, something very dear to the heart of God is the local church. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, uh, in the latter part of the verse, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And ever since he uttered those words, he's been busy 
establishing his kingdom, building his church, the ecclesia, the elect, those who are called out, separated from the world, and separated unto his divine purpose, and empowered to establish his kingdom and his will in the earth. And a very essential uh, part of that building program and process is the local church. I'm not sure that many Christians realize this reality, but one of the most significant decisions you will ever make as a believer is where you go to church. That, That one decision will have tremendous impact on your life personally, the lives of your family, and can potentially impact uh, your destiny in Christ. In fact, 1 Corinthians 12 and 18, the apostle Paul writing, he said, God, notice this, this word now, God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. Now notice it doesn't say just as we pleased but just as he pleased. One translation, the Moffat translation, I'll just quote to you, it says, as it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. So as members of the body of Christ, that tells me if God has carefully placed us in the body, then where I go to church and where you go to church is not so much a matter of personal preference or choice as much as it is a matter of divine placement and appointment. Now, there are several reasons for that. First of all, every sheep needs a shepherd. This is God's plan. This is his way. So as a believer, God will place each one of us in a local church under the care of a pastor where we can be fed the word of God. We can grow up spiritually. We can be nurtured and protected as a young believer. We can be encouraged and preserved as a mature believer. And where we can receive the necessary uh, truth spiritual equipment, impartations to keep us from the snares of the enemy along our journey, and to make sure that we're best equipped to fulfill our divine purpose. Are you with me? So, uh, you know, the local church also is where each of us as believers find our significance as a Christian. It's where our individual purposes are discovered within the context of the corporate purpose. How many of you know that as a Christian, none of us were created as a believer to be an entity unto ourselves? The reality is that as Christians, as believers in Christ, our lives, our purposes, and our destinies are interconnected. So the reality is my life as a Christian and your life as a Christian can never truly find its significance until we discover how we relate to the body of Christ as a whole. And that discovery primarily takes place, once again, for most of us within the context of the local church. And also the local church is where, uh, of course, we should develop relationships with other Christians. It's where we mutually supply one another. We encourage one another. So I always encourage believers, man, don't just dart out the door when the amen comes. Shake a few hands. Introduce yourself to one another. Begin to develop uh, relationships because uh, we need them. This is God's plan that we strengthen and encourage one another. In fact, in Hebrews 10, 25, Uh, The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. One translation says, hey man, let's don't give up meeting together. How many of you are familiar with a a ministry uh, and a man called uh, Rick Renner? Anyone in your company? Some may, some may not. Anyway, Mr. Renner, uh, he's, a, he's a prolific writer, author, uh, Greek Hebrew scholar, wonderful teacher, very sound and solid. You know, there's a lot of nonsense out there that are supposed to be prophetic voices in the, in, in the body. And I'm not putting anyone down, but I like, you know, it gives me a sense of confidence when there are individuals who are solid, they're steadfast, they're on the word, and, and you can rely uh, pretty heavily upon 
upon them. So I don't make it my habit uh, to seek out everyone's word for the coming year, you know. But something came across my, my attention. My daughter actually brought it to my attention. She abs- subscribes to the newsletter uh, of Mr. Renner. She said, Dad, Mr. Renner saw something or heard something from the Spirit of God re- regarding 2024. You may be interested in it. I said, well, put it on my desk, honey, and I'll, I'll look at it. This was in December. So anyway, the context of this word was he and his wife were on a flight uh, to a particular destination. In the midst of the flight, uh, the pilot came on and said, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be some turbulence ahead. Uh, He said, we will arrive safely, but please remain seated and keep your seatbelts fastened. He said, upon hearing those words, the Spirit of God uh, spoke to him. And he said, the year of 2024 will be visited with turbulent episodes across the entire globe, particularly in the realm of finance, politics, and among the nations. Uh, These episodes will be of a sort that could potentially cause those who are not firmly rooted in God's word to be deeply disturbed. But for those, now I want you to listen, those who stay in faith in peace, in love, and in fellowship, and continue sowing their seeds for the sake of eternity, they will experience a much-needed sense of peace, power, and supernatural victory. Are you with me? So no matter what comes this year, what are we going to do? We're going to stick together. We're going to stand together, we're going to stay together, and all will be well with us. So, uh, thinking about that once again, uh, that where we go to church is not so much a matter of personal preference as much as it is a matter of divine appointment and placement. I said to you there's several reasons for that. First of all, God knows what each of us personally as a believer are going to need to to grow, to develop, to mature, to navigate the challenges that we may face personally in life. Uh, And he knows where to send us to receive the truth, the equipment, the impartations, and also the relationships that will be beneficial, not only personally, but for kingdom purposes. So being in the right place with the right people at the right time is very essential. And of course, it's not all about what we can receive, but it's also quite naturally about what we can supply. Because there are not only personal destinies, but there are corporate ones. So in Exodus 31, and we've read it before, but I want to reiterate it. God had commissioned Moses to build a tabernacle. You remember in the Old Testament? The Lord spoke to Moses saying, See, I've called by name Bezalel, the son of Huri, of the son of Har, of the tribe of Judah, or her, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and in bronze. You mean God anoints people with these gifts? Absolutely. In cutting jewels for setting and carving wood to work in all manner of workmanship. And I've appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahishma, of the tribe of Dan. And I've put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans. Now watch this phrase, that they may make all that I have commanded you. And verse 11, the same chapter, and the anointing oil and the sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you, shall they do. Isn't that interesting? Moses, I have an assignment. Build me a tabernacle. Yes, sir, but I'm going to surround you now with individuals that I have personally graced and endowed with abilities that will undergird that assignment and bring it into fruition. And the same reality holds true in the New Testament church. When God sends a pastor to a city, to a region with a vision and assignment, guess what? He simultaneously calls a people if they are listening. 
with the gifts, the graces, the resources, and the abilities to bring that vision into full fruition and impact that city, that region, and that nation. Amen? So I always encourage people, man, listen, never allow anyone or anything to separate you from your God-appointed placement in the body of Christ as it pertains to the local church. I mean, there's always going to be opportunities to get disgruntled or offended over something or, you know, maybe even life's discouragements and people pull away. And because I've been around long enough to observe, it just doesn't always fare well in the long run. Now, we know people transition in life by the leading of the Spirit. Of course, we understand that. But my encouragement is, I believe there is an eternal reward for all of those who will find their place in the body of Christ and stick with it. Amen. You'll be blessed for your faithfulness, just like your pastors will be blessed. So with all of that said this morning, once again, I just want to commend you. You know, this is my first time in the new auditorium. And man, what a blessing. To, to be a part of this journey from years ago and to see uh, uh, the journey that has unfolded and to see many faces that were there from the beginning and now so many new faces, it is a tremendous blessing. Praise God. So you're, you're to be commended. And I said all that to say that it just seemed good to me in the Holy Spirit this morning. Uh, that we should celebrate, in a, in, a, in a sense, the goodness of God, reflecting upon His faithfulness, His goodness uh, to us personally as a Christian, but also uh, to us as a church, and to offer uh, what the Bible terms the sacrifice of praise. How many of you are familiar with that term, the sacrifice of praise? So before we do, I just want to lay uh, some good groundwork from the scriptures so that everyone that is present understands what we're doing scriptural. And if you're visiting, you'll be comforted by the word. Amen. And uh, it's just always good to base our activities upon the scriptures. So let me give you a little history real quick. Uh, Hannah, can you hand me that water, honey? I got a dry mouth today. Would you open it for me as well? Thank you. Just take the top for me. I only got one hand here. Thank you. I'm kind of casual. Is that okay? All right. So, in the Old Testament, uh, there was a priesthood from the tribe of Levi, if you don't know biblical history. And it was the responsibility of the priesthood to not only carry out the administrative duties of the temple, but also it was their responsibility to offer the sacrifices that were required as ordinances of worship uh, on behalf of themselves and the people. So there were daily sacrifices, there were weekly sacrifices, there were annual sacrifices, there were wave offerings, grain offerings, sin offerings, offerings required when someone's health was restored. I mean, man, you name it, they had it. And it was the responsibility of the priesthood uh, to offer that. I'm going to move it so I don't kick it. Amen. Because <laughs> I have been known to get happy. Amen. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there are plenty of sacrifices that were required. And so once again, it was the responsibility of the priesthood to do so. Now, what I want you to realize is that now we're in a New Testament dispensation. And you and I as New Testament, be Testament believers constitute the New Testament priesthood. Notice uh, 1 Peter 2 and 9. You are, speaking of you and I, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. So if someone says to you, well, aren't you special? You say, yes, I am. Sure am. <laughs> that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So here we are. We're the New Testament priesthood. And guess what? It's still the responsibility of the priesthood to offer the sacrifices that are required as ordinances of worship under the new covenant. Now, just as a, a little further history, you understand in the Old Testament, 
man is separated from God because of sin. Sin is the willful transgression of God's commandments, His ordinances, and His moral law. That is what sin is. And in the Old Testament, a man is separated from God because of sin. And so the Bible tells us in Romans 6 and 23, notice, the wages, what does that mean? The payment necessary for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank God. (laughs) So the wages, the payment for sin is death. So God said, here's what we're going to do. This is the old covenant. He said, I'm going to devise a temporary solution for this sin problem. And this is what we'll do. Every year, once a year, the high priest and only the high priest will come into the very Holy of Holies, which was the inner sanctuary of the temple. And he will shed the blood of a sacrificial animal upon the altar, and he will sprinkle its blood in my presence on the mercy seat. And I will receive the blood of that animal as payment or compensation for the sins of the people for one year. You say, now why blood? Well, Leviticus 17 and 11, it tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement or payment or compensation for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So when the blood of that animal was shed because the life of the flesh is in the blood, it was symbolic of the life of that animal being given as a substitutionary sacrifice for the people. And so he died, so to speak, in their stead. Does that make sense? Because Hebrews 9 and 12 or 22 says in the latter part of the verse, 9 and 22, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission. There's no dismissal of the charges. So God said, we're going to do that every year until I can send the final solution, which he did. Matthew chapter 1 and 21, she shall bring forth a son and will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. How? By shedding his own blood upon the altar of the cross. The Bible calls him the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. Are you with me? eternally satisfying the claims of justice. Notice Hebrews 9 and 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. How many of you have professed personally your faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and confessed him as Lord and Savior? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have. Congratulations. And if you haven't, you'll be given an opportunity today to make that most valuable uh, uh, decision. Are you with me? So, that particular sacrifice never has to be offered again. It was offered once and for all, eternally once again, satisfying the claims of justice. The sin problem has been resolved, and we just simply have to put our personal faith in that. However, there's still sacrifices that are required to be offered by the priesthood in the New Testament dispensation. It's not the blood of goats, pigeons, doves, calves, or heifers. Amen. What are these sacrifices? The Bible clearly tells us. 1 Peter 2 and 5. Notice, you also, as lively stones, are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up, somebody tell me, 
spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So predominantly the sacrifices that you and I are to offer as the New Testament priesthood are spiritual in nature and in origin. Now there's several uh, in the New Testament listed, but because of time's sake, I want to go right to our, our main agenda and I want to look at this particular sacrifice. Hebrews 13 and 15. Hebrews 13 and 15. Therefore, by him, by Jesus Christ, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Now, aren't you glad there's not a period right there? Because it would leave us in the dark as to what that sacrifice actually consists of. But the scripture's very clear. By Jesus Christ, therefore, let's offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. So the sacrifice of praise, according to the New Testament scripture, demands the expression of the heart in thanksgiving to God through the lips or the mouth. Now, in our modern society, and I'm not taking issue with it or saying, uh, uh, correcting, uh, so to speak, but in our modern society, because people have become unaccustomed to actually expressing their hearts verbally, we have substituted an external action for an internal response. And many times when we say, let's praise the Lord, we'll all applaud. Well, Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Fine. Uh, I'm not going to take issue with that, but please do not leave the other undone. Praise demands the expression of the heart in thanksgiving to God through the lips or mouth. So when someone says, come on, let's praise the Lord, that's when the hands go up and the mouth goes open and we begin to thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness. Time and time again, I love you. I worship you. I praise you. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> That's the New Testament sacrifice. Now, once again, enjoy yourself with the music. Have a great time. Clap your hands. But when somebody says, let's praise God, make sure you're doing the other as well. Are you with me? Okay. Let's see the connection. Psalm 34 in verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. See the connection? Psalm 71 in verse 8, let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your honor all the day. So I used to teach, you know, in Bible school at uh, Rhema Bible Training College, a course called the Heart of the Worshiper. So I did some investigation on the word praise in the Hebrew. I want to give you, there's five basic connotations. Uh, in the Hebrew, the word praise means to shine. So that has something to do with our countenance. Did you know the Bible says, lift up your countenance, all ye saints of the Lord? So you cannot praise God with an old molly grub face. Come on, everybody, isn't the Lord good? Yeah. No, no, that doesn't fly, right? <laughs> Woo, it means to shine. Something on the inside ought to be coming out the outside. You've got something to be thankful for and radiate on the inside. So it means to shine. Here's the second meaning of the word praise, to make a show. I'm just telling you what it is, to make a show. So what that tells me is that when people are praising God, there's something occurring that is observable. Something's happening. Are you with me? <laughs> it's not a funeral home. Something's happening. So we're praising, we're shining, making a show. To boast, that's the third meaning, to boast. What do you mean when you boast about someone? Basically, you're bragging. You know, when I was a kid on the playground, you know, if you got in a tussle with somebody and you started losing, you'd get up and you'd start talking about your daddy. 
now they'll shoot you, but we used to talk about your daddy, you know? And uh, I'd say, man, my dad's six foot two. He'll, he'll whip your daddy. And he'll say, no, my daddy, you start bragging on your daddy, you know, because he's bigger than you are. Well, that's what we do, man. In praise, we start bragging upon our heavenly father. Woo! <laughs> There's none above you. There's none beside you. There's none before you. You alone are God. Your throne is in the heavens. Your kingdom rules over all. Are you with me? We start boasting. So we shine. We make a show. We boast. Now here's number four. Get ready. This is scriptural. A part of praise is to celebrate. To celebrate. Now... Have you ever seen anybody celebrate? I mean, I grew up in in a a more denominational setting, and I thank God because I was thoroughly saved. But I mean, if anybody shouted out amen, everybody look at them. (laughs) You know. But hey, an element of praise is celebration, and I don't know if you realize it or not. But in heaven, there's going to be awesome moments. Now, we're not going to be floating on clouds with angels' wings 24-7. You got that. Heaven's going to be very busy, very active. You've got all kind of galaxies and everything going on. God's big. But there will be moments where we're in the awesome presence and we worship Him as His people. And then there will also be moments that are celebratory. Man, where there's some joy and excitement and celebration. And you might as well get tuned up down here. Get some practice. All right? So celebrate, man. Celebrate. You ever seen anybody celebrate? Now, if you are a fan, I'm talking about you got a football team, a basketball team, baseball, hockey, whatever it is, and you are a bona fide fan, and man, your team is playing, and they've come down to the last minute or so, and they've got the ball. They're behind the three points, and dear Lord, man, they hike that thing, and the guy makes a touchdown. And you know it's all over. We just won. If you're a fan, you don't sit there and say, well, is it that wonderful Martha? (laughs) Is that how you act? No, man. When you're a fan, you're jumping up and down. Whoa, you're excited. You're dancing around. You're hugging people. (laughs) And guess what? Nobody thinks anything about it. They're like, man, look at them. Boy, they are a fan. Well, guess what? Jesus did a lot more than take a bag of wind down the field. He redeemed us. Woo! He deserves a little celebration. And it's okay to do it in church. Not every service, but there are moments. Are you with me? Shine, make a show, bow, celebrate. Some people come in, I just don't think all that commotion's necessary. (laughs) But the same person will have their bag of chips and Dr. Pepper watching football on Sunday afternoon and their team make a touchdown and they go wild. What's the difference? What you're passionate about. Who you're passionate about. It's all right to celebrate. And then finally, to commend or speak favorably of. So praise involves commending and speaking favorably favorably of God uh, concerning all that he's done for us in Christ. Father, thank you that you've made us new creations. Thank you that you delivered us from the power of darkness and you translated us into the kingdom of your dear son. Thank you that you called me out of darkness into light. Thank you that you've raised me up and made me sit in heavenly places in Christ. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. Thank you. Are you with me? Commending. And then in the Greek, of course, uh, you have uh, this meaning very simply. It means the genuine, so that means heartfelt, genuine confession, there's the mouth again, of facts in one's life that gives glory to God. So when you're praising God personally, the genuine confession of facts is things that he's done for you personally. When he saved you, 
delivered you from drugs, alcohol, addiction, uh, fear, anxiety, depression, uh, healed a relationship or helped you move forward when one was broken, anything that maybe he's done for you personally, and you just offer that sacrifice of thanksgiving. Are you with me? So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to offer the sacrifice of praise to God corporately and personally. Uh, 1 Chronicles 16 and 34 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because He's good. And His mercy endures forever. Let me give you just a couple of more scriptures. It, this is Psalm 92, 1 and 2. Watch this. It is good to say thank you to the Lord. To sing praises to God who is above all gods every morning. Tell Him, thank you for your kindness. Every evening, rejoice in all of His faithfulness. Here's another good one. Psalm 35 and 28, I will tell everyone how good, how great and how good you are. I'll praise you all day long. Like they said, uh, don't be shy. Remember they sang it? Oh, my soul. I'll tell everybody what you've done for me. I will give you praise. I will testify of your goodness. Don't you love it? So here's what we're going to do. And uh, this is a participator service. This isn't a spectator service. All right, and if you don't like the service today, you come on back. I'm not the pastor. I'm just visiting. This crazy guy will be gone. Amen. (laughs) You say, why are you moving everything? Well, I like to get happy. So, we're going to offer this sacrifice of praise. We're going to shine We're going to make a show, we're going to boast, we're going to celebrate, we're going to commend and speak favorably of God. Is that scriptural? Absolutely. So the game plan is this. In a moment, I'm going to ask everybody in the room to stand in a moment. And then I'm going to count to three. And when I do, and we've already exercised that, uh, Pastor Melissa had no idea what I was ministering on. But on the count of three, we are going to lift our voices in a corporate shout of praise, thanking Him for all that He has done for us in the past and in the present, right? You say, "Uh, well, I've never shouted before. (laughs) Well, here's your opportunity. Just put your head back and let her rip. Amen. (laughs) Nobody's going to be looking at you. You say, well, why do we have to shout? Because the Bible is full of that admonition. The Bible says in Psalm 5, Oh, let all those who put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. The Bible says, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You know, God likes shouting. You say, how do you know he likes shouting? Because if you'll read the Old Testament, every time God was in charge of the battle plan, if you do these old stories, Joshua when he fought the battle of Jericho, Gideon and the Midianites, Israel and the Philistines, every time Father God was in charge, he'd say, all right, boys. Do this, 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 and then shout. I mean, just about every time. And when they would shout, it would activate the power of God or activate uh, the, the, the victory in those situations. So, man, there's something about the shout. So we're going to give him a corporate shout of praise. We're going to scare every devil in Yorkville. Woo! We're going to let him know restore churches alive and well. And if you're not used to that, like I said, just come on in as much as you can. You know, just do what you can. So we're going to give a corporate shout. And then, and I know we have a time frame, but I'm going to ask a few of you as your heart prompts you 
to come up here and give us a very short, concise uh, sacrifice of praise of something that God has done for you personally in your life. Now, this is not our latest revelation from the Scripture. It's not a mini-sermon. It, 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 listen, now, you ever read a newspaper or a, or a magazine? You got headlines, fine print. No fine print. We don't have time for fine print. This is headlines. So if you're a person given to great detail, start thinking right now how to consolidate, okay? Because I want to keep this thing flowing, amen? We want to keep it flowing. And uh, we just want to give an opportunity for a few of you to come and to testify or give a sacrifice. So you'll come on this side and you'll come on this side. There's a step there. And I'll call you one at a time. I will hold the microphone. I'm going to hold it. And the reason I'll hold the microphone so I can keep it up close to your mouth, okay? And then if you get too long-winded, I can... I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so, everybody say headlines. But we want to hear if he, if he delivered you from drugs, alcohol, fear, depression, anxiety. If he, if he helped you pay your bill, if he blessed your business. We want to give him glory today. That's scriptural sacrifice of praise, okay? And then we'll give one final shout. But that shout is different from the first one. The final shout is a praise of anticipation. I call it an anticipatory praise. Because whatever may come this year... Whatever tumultuous uh, situations may unfold, we're going to praise God in advance. We have the victory. We're going to stay together, stick together, move forward together. Are you with me? So it'll be an anticipatory shout. And if you have something you've been believing for, but you haven't seen the manifestation of, you just go ahead and praise him in advance. Are you with me? Come on, everybody. Let's stand up. Woo! Hallelujah. All right, now listen. Now's your time. Guys, I got track, so just uh, you, can, you can come up at the end. But, um, you know, this is your opportunity to express your thanksgiving to God. And maybe you've never done it before. Well, why not in a corporate setting when everybody else is shouting, nobody will hear you, right? And you can just kind of let loose. All right, are you ready to praise Him, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks? All right. Here we go. Guys, you ready? One. What are we going to do? We're going to shout. What do I say? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Come on. <laughs> Father, we praise you. Oh, we thank you for your goodness. You've been so faithful to restore church. You've been so faithful to your people. You've been so good and so merciful and so kind. Oh, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> hey, we give you glory. Oh, yeah. Give him the glory. It's all right. Give me more track, more track. more track. Hey! Oh, give him. Come on. Come on, somebody. Give him glory. We give you praise. Give him the glory. Oh, give him praise. You know why? He woke us up this morning. Started me on my way. Give him the glory. Hey, give him, you know what? Hey, you got a right. You got a right to praise him. You are the praise him. Hey, you got a right to praise him. You are the praise him. Anybody got a right? You got a right to praise him. You are the praise him. I'm old school, brother. Hey. He woke us up this morning, started me on my way. Give him the glory. Hey, come on, give him praise. Woo! All right now, brother.
another day. Bring it down a little bit. I want somebody in this house to come up here and tell us something good that God's done for you. Don't sit there like a cow at a new gate. Amen. If he's done something, come right over here and come right over here. Give me a few people. Come on. If he's been good to you, if he's delivered you, come tell us how good. Come on up here and tell us. If this church has been a blessing to you, stand right here. Now, everybody say headlines. All right, here we go. I want to thank him for his provision. I want to thank him for Malachi chapter 3. I want to thank him that he's opened up the windows of heaven and poured out a blessing upon me. I don't have room to contain it. I can give it away, and he rebukes the devourer for my sake. <laughs> Come on up here, brother. I'll call you. Come up here. All right, tell us how good he's been to you. Give us more of this dick in the monitor right here. A lot more. God gave me all of you a family. Hey! <laughs> Give me an usher right over here to help these ladies. Watch your step there. Come stand right here. All right, tell us how good he's been. All right, God has healed me from gallbladder issues, and he paid my bill. Did you hear that? Healed her a gallbladder and paid her bill. Stand right here. All right. Tell us how good he's been. I just want to thank him that he's given me a revelation of just how much he loves me. <laughs> I need an usher right here to help these ladies up. Come on over here. Tell us how good he's been. Turn around there. All right. Tell us how good. At 21, God gave me back my life after I was dead for five and a half minutes. To live, and I'm now 73 and hoping for a long life ahead of me. 70. Woo! Doesn't she look good? Glory to God. Come on, brother. Hey! Oh, yeah! Tell us how good he's been. I want to make sure y'all hear him now. All honor and God and praise the one true king for uh, helping me defeat 15 years of addiction of drugs, alcohol, and pornography. <laughs> he's the God of freedom. Come on, honey. Come on, hey. Stand right here. Tell us how good the Lord's been. I've been clean and sober for 18 years and free of depression. Clean and sober 18 years. Woo! He's the liberator. Hey! Tell us how good. Well, I was born with dyslexia. I never graduated high school, and I graduated in 2022 from Harris Bible College. <laughs> Tell us how good he is. Um, Father God uh, gave me my husband on a blind date that I had no idea. <laughs> and we've been married 22 years. So. Oh, hallelujah. Gave her a husband on a blind date. Come on. We're going to take a few more. Come on. Uh-oh, here she comes. Now, I want to give God the praise for bringing me here to this family of loved ones. Also for my family that are coming. And those of you that are waiting for unsaved loved ones, they're coming. Just stay on your knees and praise them. <laughs> She's celebrating. Amen. Come on over here. Oh, hallelujah. Watch yourself there. Good morning. Tell us how good. I've known Jesus most of my life, and I want to thank him for what he has kept me from. Parents, he is a preserving God, and as your children know him and walk with him, he is a God that will keep them from. And I thank you for that in my life. God will keep your kids. We're going to take a few more. This is what we got here, and then we got to go. Tell us how good. I want to thank God for giving me strength. Every day to continue to live on after my husband was killed in a motorcycle accident last June. And I also want to give a heart full of thanks to Jane and Billy to bring me here to this wonderful church. God bless you all. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. Hey, watch your step right there. Come on, stand up here. Tell us how good. 
He delivered me from rejection. He has given me the desires of my heart, and he's not finished with me yet. Hey! <laughs> Come on. I'll take you. All right. We got three more, and then we'll be done. Tell us how good. I want to let you know that God has set me free of um, financial debt for the past 20 years. Last year, I am debt free. I am financially free. I owe nothing. <laughs> hey, if you need that, shout a little bit. <laughs> Come on! Hey! Stay right here. All right. Tell us how good. God is so good. Um, I just want to thank him for deliverance. I wore shame, guilt, anxiety, and fear like a heavy coat 24 7. He's 65. And I'm just so thankful for the peace and his restoration and his redemption. I just want to quote Psalm 147 3. He healed my broken heart and he bound up my wounds. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on. Woo. We got this one and one more. This one and one more. Come right here, honey. Tell us how good he's been. Yeah. Um, he delivered me from suicidal ideation, depression. I graduated from college debt free. I have a new job, a new car. Uh, <laughs> everything's new. Somebody celebrate a little bit. <laughs> Come on, honey. Right Come tell us. Tell us how good. Hallelujah. God delivered me and my daughter from a traumatic birth. I almost died. My daughter almost died. And he's turned my mourning into dancing. <laughs> oh, she wants to tell one more thing. And he brought my family here to restore home. This is a celebration service. This is praise. So here's what we want to do. I'm going to give it back to Pastor. I want us to give one final shout. And this is expectation. You need something to manifest. You need something to come into fruition. On this shout, you just put your faith out there. Are you ready? Come on. One, two, three. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's coming to pass. We're going victoriously through 2024. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. Pastor. I'm about to get happy up here, Pastor. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Hey. Oh, man. Come on, one more time. Lift up a shout with me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing now, and we thank you for all that you have in store. We trust in you, we love you, and we're grateful, Lord, for these times to celebrate and for this moment right now to give you thanks for all that you are to us and all that you've done for us. Hallelujah. Just going to ask you to remain standing here as we close things out for, I don't know how you close this out, I'll be honest with you, so... <laughs> Just want to shout our way all the way out, all the way home. But, but, but hey, aren't you grateful for Brother Marty coming? Let's put our hands together for him. And 